We live in uncertain times. The fear of the pandemic has gripped the world. It has taken friends, family, coworkers, and strangers alike. It has caused businesses to fail, schools to be shuttered, and our whole way of life has been turned on its head. It feels like the world is ending, but it's not ending. It's transforming and changing before our very eyes. As pandemics have always changed societies and civilizations throughout history. One such pandemic was the plague of Athens in 430 BCE. This plague, by the time it burned itself out five years later, left a lasting imprint on the people of Athens. Religious observations, the importance of honor, and even the way the dead were buried were drastically changed by the pandemic. To the Athenians living at the time, it probably felt like their world was ending. But just like today, the world wasn't ending, it was simply changing. Sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story while Rome burns. The Peloponnesian War began in 431 BCE between the armies of Sparta and Athens. Athens was a great naval power in the region at the time, while Sparta and its allies were able to field massive, well-trained land armies that were a force to be reckoned with. Athens realized that they couldn't win in an outright land battle against Sparta and didn't want to leave the villages, farmers, and other citizens of their city-state unprotected. So the leaders of Athens ordered all citizens to retreat behind the walls as they waited out the approaching Spartan army. This strategy would prove to be the city's undoing. The decision to pull back behind the walls of Athens deprived the city-state of the crop production from the farms around the city. The Athenians were able to maintain access to their port thanks to a connecting wall that encircled both Athens and Piraeus. This access to the sea was a lifeline for the city, bringing in valuable crops and goods at a high price to the people. The military leader during this time was known as Pericles. He advised against open combat with the Spartan army and instead relied upon the Athenian fleet to win battles. But this strategy was a double-edged sword. As the fleet harassed the Spartan army, the population of Athens exploded as refugees crowded into the walls. The city quickly became overpopulated. People slept in temples, shops, and even in the streets. These overcrowded conditions, along with the general poor hygiene and poor medical knowledge during this time, led to the city becoming a petri dish for germs, disease, and sickness. A year into the Peloponnesian War, the plague of Athens had begun. No one is certain exactly what the disease was that afflicted Athens in 430 BCE or if it was actually a collection of different diseases. The origin of the plague is also disputed, though the historian Thucydides claims that it came from Ethiopia, passing through Egypt and Libya before spreading further into the Mediterranean region. Again, this is disputed, but Thucydides is our only source in this matter, and so his testimony holds some weight. The symptoms listed caused further confusion in identifying the cause and name of the disease. Fever, inflammation of the eyes, sore throat, sneezing, loss of voice, coughing, vomiting, ulcers and pustules, extreme thirst, insomnia, and gastrointestinal issues were all common symptoms recorded by Thucydides. It is said that the symptoms began in the head and worked their way down the body. Diseases such as typhus, typhoid, Ebola, hemorrhagic fever, and bubonic plague 
are all favored by various scholars and researchers in the field. Additionally, it has been theorized that a mixture of these diseases or a completely different disease, one that perhaps has died out or is no longer a threat to humans, are to blame. Thucydides states, quote, Neither were the physicians at first of any service, ignorant as they were of the proper way to treat it, but they died themselves the most thickly, as they visited the sick most often. The doctors and caregivers in Athens were quickly struck down by this virus, indicating a high level of transmission and infectivity. The disease wiped out an estimated 25% of the Athenian population during the years that it swept through the city. A majority of those killed by the virus were Athenian citizens, leaving the city stripped of potential soldiers to further fight the war. Attempts to hire mercenaries from nearby regions and kingdoms failed miserably, with mercenaries refusing to go into service to a city riddled with disease and filled with death. The deaths caused by the plague of Athens overwhelmed the temples and priests who would normally perform burial rites. As people died rapidly, the need to quickly dispose of the bodies became paramount. Mass graves and large funeral pyres were constructed. Much like the scene in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, people would literally wheel out their dead into the streets and onto the funeral pyres. It is said that the flames burned so bright and the smoke rose so high that the Spartans, upon seeing the pyres from outside the walls, turned around and went home, not willing to commit themselves to fighting a plague-ridden city. Eventually, Pericles, the military leader for Athens, succumbed to the disease and died. The tide of the war rose against Athens. The plague of Athens didn't just impact the war with Sparta, the plague brought about huge societal, legal, and religious changes as well. Much like today, the pandemic that hit Athens fundamentally changed their entire way of life and possibly the entire trajectory of their city-state's destiny. One such societal change that occurred as a result of the plague of Athens was what scholars call a complete disappearance of societal morals during the plague. Thucydides wrote, the catastrophe was so overwhelming that men, not knowing what would happen next to them, became indifferent to every rule of religion or law. The uncertainty of what would happen, of who would survive, or what would happen afterwards, led to a complete and utter disregard for the rule of law, the hierarchy of their religious institutions, and the traditions that governed Athenian society. Athenian society, prior to the plague, valued honor and a good reputation as key attributes of a good, upstanding citizen. As the plague went on, as more and more people died, the survivors began to feel as if they were not citizens of a city, but prisoners awaiting their death sentence. Honorable living, according to Thucydides, disappeared from Athens as people saw nothing but the futility of existence. Along with this drop in honorable behavior came frivolous spending by Athenians, as they saw no point in saving their money or investing it wisely. Part of the increased frivolous spending was also due to the fact that the plague had a disproportionate impact on the wealthy citizens of Athens, who left their wealth to relatives who had been in lower classes or had lived in poverty. The plague also brought about a crisis of faith for the people of Athens. As the city's population ballooned and the disease killed both pious and impious, believer and non-believer alike, many felt the gods had abandoned Athens and favored Sparta. Even the oracles of the city seemed to back this up, stating that the god of disease Apollo would fight for Sparta, and that a war with Sparta would bring with it a pestilence. Thucydides dismisses this as classic superstition. But that dismissal did nothing to soothe the anxiety of the Athenians. 
the legal repercussions that fell upon many of the survivors in the city was the final impact of the plague. Many of the people residing in Athens turned out to have been immigrants or foreign residents who had tried passing themselves off as legal Athenian citizens. This was considered a huge crime in Athens, and so the authorities enslaved these foreign citizens and adopted stricter laws on how to become an Athenian citizen. This was a foolish and short-sighted decision made by the Athenian leaders. The Athenian army's rank and file was composed of citizens. By decreasing the amount of citizens and making it harder to become a citizen, Athens' army size and strength was permanently reduced. This consequence of the plague was a key factor in causing Athens' defeat in the war and the loss of their influence in the region. This fall was one from which Athens never fully recovered. The Plague of Athens was a world-changing event that decimated a city-state's population, destroyed societal norms, caused a crisis of faith, and led to the eventual downfall of the prestige and influence that Athens had once had. The parallels between then and now are eerie, and one cannot help but wonder if this is the end of the world as we know it. But the world isn't ending, it's changing. Let's hope that we as people can change with it. Thank you for listening to our show. While Rome Burns is part of the One Up Podcast Network. Find more of our content by going to oneuppodcast.com. Cover art by Igor Nunez. You can contact him for commissions on Twitter at WeCan. That's W H Y C C A N. Find more of his work by going to wecan.artstation.com. Background music provided by One Place Here under a Creative Commons Zero 1.0 Universal Public Domain Dedication. Find them on Twitter at One Place Here Music or at freemusicarchive.org slash music slash One Place Here. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye!